Not bad, how are you today? Customer Solution Center uh, left me a note to give you a call while I'm on my way over to uh, do the post remediation inspection at your address. Perfect, so I should be there in around 20 minutes. Today you guys will be joining me to see what an inspector does on a day-to-day -day basis. We'll be going from um, one client to another to either perform post remediation inspections, air quality inspections, just any type of inspection that's necessary. So the first inspection that we're going to is a post remediation inspection, which is basically when an inspector goes to the property after the remediation project has been complete to make sure that the quality of work is up to our standards and to make sure that there's no more problem. When the inspector goes, he's also looking for any recommendations that he can make to the clients to ensure that the mold problem doesn't reoccur. What's happening here is the leak was coming from there. It's now been fixed and it basically affected this entire area. And that's why the removal and remediation had to happen of this area. And now I'll be checking to see if any active moisture is still present. So that was an example of a post remediation inspection that went very well. The client was very happy with the remediation work and when I went in to take a look at the quality of the work and to make sure that uh, any of the remaining discoloration wasn't fungal in nature, they all came back negative on the swab tests. Everything went very smoothly during this post remediation inspection. On top of that, the client had already fixed the source of the leak prior to the post remediation inspection, which is very ideal because if uh, the leak wasn't fixed and there was active moisture in the building materials, then we would have had to postpone the post remediation inspection to another time to ensure that uh, the active moisture inside the building materials doesn't uh, cause another mold problem in the client's property. I'm going in now to do a scope of work assessment for a client uh, who reported a mold problem in their property. Um, I got a little bit of a background of what's going on in their property. What I know so far is that uh, they have mold growing in one of the bedrooms between the bed and the wall. Now, this isn't guaranteed, but most of the time when this occurs, it's due to elevated humidity and the lack of ventilation in the bedroom. Usually what happens is when the bed is placed directly against the wall, there's no room for the air to pass in that area or for the air to circulate. And if the humidity is elevated in that room, what happens is it creates the perfect environment for mold to start growing. The best advice I can give in situations like this, not just for the bedroom, but for the rest of the house, is to leave at least a six inch gap between any furniture and the walls of the house. I'm going to be speaking about why a person without the proper training and proper equipment shouldn't be doing mold removal on his own, even if it's for his own property. The two major reasons are first for the person's health and two because of cross-contamination. When it comes to the person's health, all mold is dangerous and all mold is able to cause allergic reactions in humans. Some species of mold are toxigenic molds, other species are allergenic. For allergenic molds, it depends on the person's immunity system. That's why some people will feel the symptoms while other people will not. When it comes to toxigenic molds, it's not just about the person's immunity system anymore. The dangers of toxigenic molds are much higher. Now, the second thing was cross-contamination. Without the proper equipment, such as negative air pressure and proper containment, a person can end up cross-contaminating a large portion of their house with mold, causing the mold problem to grow immensely. That's why it's important to hire a trained professional with the right equipment and right PPE when dealing with mold. To become an expert in identifying mold in your home, and if you want to learn more about molds and other fungi, check our mold library on bossmold.com and subscribe to our channel.